Oh, hey. Sorry, just doing my exercise for the night. Wait, I, I feel naked. Give me a second. Whew. Wow, I got my cape. I knew I was missing something, but today when we're gonna be talking about holiday eating and holiday planning, I think I'm missing one more thing. I know what it is. Give me one second. Wow, now I actually feel like I'm in the holiday spirit. But welcome back to the Kidney Care YouTube channel. I am your host, Binder Man, and today we are going to be talking about how to safely feast and not fear the holidays and planning around holiday eating to make it safe and to make sure that you're choosing the right foods for your health. But before we start, Binder Man wants to wish you and your family a very safe and healthy holiday season this year. Now, before we jump into talking about the most kidney-friendly foods and foods that you should be mindful of, I want to share with you a not-so-fun fact about the holiday season, specifically November, December, and January, and that's that this is a time where we see a lot more dialysis patients requiring visits to the hospital, partially because of their food choices and not coming to treatment consistently. But more often in this time of the year, we see people eating a lot more potassium than they should be eating, maybe eating way more salt or drinking way more fluid than their body needs. And sometimes this results in more frequent hospitalizations. So it's really important to keep in mind that if you don't keep track of what you're eating, you could have consequences. So that's what we're here to go over today and I hope this video really clears the air on some things. Now, as you're waiting for that main meal or maybe you eat a lunch for your holiday meal, but when you're waiting for that main meal, the anticipation for that meal and the time leading up to that can be very difficult because sometimes you're exposed to a lot more food that maybe you don't normally have access to or don't normally have around the house. And maybe you're hanging out, catching up with family and friends, and sometimes you lose track of maybe what you have eaten and what you are actually eating. So some kidney-friendly appetizers that are lower in phosphorus, potassium, and sodium are things like deviled eggs. Deviled eggs are a great source of protein as well. Cream cheese and low sodium crackers or pretzels or the unsalted pretzels can make for a great appetizer. Having a little fruit tray or a spread of fruit and you getting your own little plate of berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, um, clementines, grapes, pineapple, you name it. But some of the lower potassium um, fruits can be can be really easy to snack on and then never sleep on unsalted popcorn it could be a really easy and great snack to just have before a meal too now when you actually get your main meal and you start to eat it's important to consider what side dishes you have besides the main you know turkey prime rib whatever meat that you're having with that meal but green beans are a lower potassium vegetable Cabbaged or cooked carrots are an amazing side dish. Apple or cranberry sauce, whether you have that with your meat or on the side. Green salad. And also double boiled mashed potatoes. And we say double boiled mashed potatoes because the longer you cook those potatoes and the more you cook those in water, the more potassium that's gonna be drawn out from them which can help lower the total amount of potassium in that potato because potatoes, as we know, are a very high um, potassium vegetable that can be dangerous if we eat a lot of at one time. So just some different appetizers and side dishes that we can keep in mind. Next, I want to talk about arguably the most important component of your holiday food plate, and that is your main dish or your protein. And I want you to always remember you have to have your protein at that meal because this is going to help provide you with those important nutrients that are going to help you keep your muscles strong, but it's also going to help 
keep you full and fill you up quicker so you aren't as likely to overindulge on other side dishes or desserts or fluids or things like that. But how, um, common holiday foods include turkey, probably the most popular if it's Thanksgiving time or Christmas time, or pork, chicken, or a Cornish game hen, duck or goose if you're into that kind of stuff, or beef if you have your top sirloin or if you're lucky enough to have a prime rib. All of those are gonna be super important when you're building your plate for your holiday meal. Now, I want to show you an example of what your plate should look like when you're designing it at your holiday meal. Now, we talked about protein, and I want you to remember that a quarter of your plate should be filled with whatever protein that you're having at that meal. Now, the other half of your plate would be great to have your veggie, so your cooked carrots, your cabbage, your green beans, if you guys have a side salad. And then this other quarter of the plate is where you can kind of splurge a little bit and have some of your favorite foods. Maybe it's your um, family's homemade stuffing or you have your double cooked mashed potatoes or maybe it's a pasta salad, whatever is kind of your favorite other side dish at that, at that meal, that would be a good place to have that, um, that side dish. So. Just remember, this is kind of what your plate should look like. A quarter protein, half of it should be those vegetables because that protein in those veggies are going to be what help fill you up and help keep you full throughout the evening. And then that last quarter of your plate, that's kind of your choice on what you fill that with, but that's where you can splurge a little bit. Remember, protein, veggies, as long as you have that as about three quarters of your plate, you're doing good. Some quick tips and tricks when cooking and preparing these main dishes like your proteins or your side dishes and things like that. Always remember to use the low sodium or the low salt broth. Also using unsalted butter instead of salted butter. Using herbs or spices instead of salt at the table or when cooking your foods. And then also make gravy from drippings rather than buying it from a packaged or buying it from the store, which is likely to have a lot more salt than you making it from scratch at home. Next, I wanna talk about beverages or what drinks are okay to have with your meal or maybe after your meal during the holiday season. And as you probably already know, the dark sodas are no bueno, but lemon or lime sodas, preferably diet if you are diabetic or for really anybody having um, the sodas, but diet ginger ale as well, or sparkling flavored water are always good if you're looking for a carbonated beverage. Iced tea or coffee, apple cider or sparkling cider, and then cranberry juice, if you're looking for a juice. But I always want you to, to remember that naturally you're going to be eating more salt at this particular holiday meal compared to what you might be eating on a normal day or a normal night. So sometimes having a beverage or having too much water can lead to even more fluid retention, which can make it harder on your organs, your heart, your lungs, harder for you to breathe. So. Really be careful on how much you drink throughout the day and with your meal or even after your meal. And always ask your dialysis team, your dietitian, your doctor, your nurse on how much water you should be drinking and how much you shouldn't be drinking at, at your meal. And after the meal is over, dessert probably always the best part when it comes to holiday meals and um, finishing off that, that holiday. Pies like apple, cherry, or berry pie are a better alternative when compared to pumpkin pie. Um, using Cool Whip instead of ice cream on top of your pie, or let's say you have an angel food cake, Cool Whip is a, is a better alternative and it's a little lower than phosphorus than something like ice cream would be. 
um, Rice Krispie treats, or if your dietitian or any of your healthcare team has a recipe for kidney friendly pumpkin pie, you could also use that for your dessert. And remember, if you Google kidney friendly pumpkin pie on Google for dialysis patients, you could probably find yourself a lower potassium pie to make yourself too. So just also things to consider when you are, you know, drinking with your meal and having your dessert after your meal too. Now that we've talked about a lot of things that are good or things to keep in mind and to fill your plate full of when it comes to your holiday eating, I want to point out and really emphasize the foods that you need to watch out for to avoid or limit when you're making your plate and you're indulging in some of these specialty holiday meals. But we just talked about desserts and potential healthier desserts. Pies I want you to really, really be mindful of unless your dietitian or your healthcare team tells you otherwise. I always want you to be mindful of and avoid or limit cream pies, pumpkin pies, sweet potato pies, pecan pies, or chocolate pies. The main reason for this is because they're going to have a lot more potassium, but a lot more phosphorus as well. That can be really harmful and really just put you over the top after you have had a bigger meal um, prior to having dessert too. But some other desserts to be mindful of include bread pudding, ice cream, especially if you're adding ice cream to any pies, gingerbread or molasses as well. Um, one thing when it comes to your meats or your protein, I want you to be sure that you are seasoning and making your own meat rather than buying a pre-seasoned meat or having cured meats that you might buy from the store. These things are also called loaded phosphorus meats. So I want you to really be mindful of the ones that are pre-seasoned when you buy from the store. They're not really labeled that in the store, so don't look for it, but think about that if you see a turkey loaded with a bunch of salt and phosphorus um, from the store. So always buy it fresh and then add your own spices and seasonings to it. And then potatoes, sweet potatoes or yams by themselves, not double boiled or leached are going to be way higher in potassium than if you double boil them or have a lower potassium vegetable on the side. So be careful and really limit or avoid these foods because that is what is going to help keep you healthy and safe when you are having these holiday meals. Lastly, I want to tell you about a couple other food and drinks that you should be really mindful of and should limit or avoid when you're having these holiday meals. And that includes pickles and olives, partially because they can have a lot of salt. Mixed nuts, mixed nuts more than likely will be salted. And depending on how much you eat, that could be loaded in potassium and phosphorus as well. Um, hot chocolate or chocolate milk or anything really with chocolate in it is going to be naturally higher in phosphorus. Chips and dip, so not the healthiest or salt-friendly appetizers that, appetizer that you could choose. And then fruits like mangoes, oranges, pomegranates, those are going to be higher in potassium. Things like tomatoes or bananas or avocados if you have guacamole. Really keep in mind that Eliminating those will be safer and better because you're likely going to be eating a lot more potassium naturally in the meats and the side dishes and the other vegetables that you're eating throughout the night too. Um, also be mindful of alcohol or beer. Try to avoid beer if you can. Um, if you do drink, we prefer you to have the hard liquor whether it's the scotch or whiskey or vodka or a little tequila take a shot before taking a beer, okay? Because the more beer you drink, the more fluid you drink, and that's really not what we want. We wanna be cutting back on fluids, okay? But at the end of the day, always, 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 say it with me now, 
take your binders, right? And I want you to ask your dietitian or your doctor if you should be taking even more binders on these holiday meals to help cover the extra amount of phosphorus that you're going to be eating. So sometimes your, your dialysis team will actually have you take maybe one or two more binders throughout the night because you will be eating a little bit more. But please make some good food choices for us this holiday season. Help you keep yourself safe and always, always, always take your binders. Okay, I can't say it enough, but I hope you learned a little bit from this video. Always ask your healthcare team what is right for you, how much potassium, how much fluid, how many binders you should be taking at each meal, and you can't go wrong. But we will see you next time, but until then, eat well and keep taking care of yourself.